Hi again, it's Jennifer with NorthwestStamper.com and I am back to share with you a fun holiday card to make this year, getting yourself ready for the Christmas season with some new products from the upcoming holiday catalog. Now, if you've been watching the Stampin' Up! specials, they've been doing something this month with the starter kit, which is anyone who signs up to become a demonstrator and check out the demonstrator perks, uh, you are going to get these goodies on top of the regular starter kit deal, which is $125 of product, your choice of what it is for $99. But if you do, you'll get some, an essentials kit, which is the grid paper, snips, bone folder, tape runner, and 2D clear blocks uh, that will be included in your kit on top of everything else at no charge. Plus, you get this really cool stamp set, the Carols of Christmas stamp set. So I wanted to share an idea for what you could do if you'd gotten the stamp set. Now, if you aren't signed up as a demonstrator or don't want to do that at this point, no worries, you have an option to get it too early. Um, you'll be able to get it in August. So in August, they will have the Carols of Christmas and this Card Front Builders Framelit Dies um, as a special sneak peek bundle opportunity. So you'll be able to order these together in August. So you'll be able to make this card too. So let me show you how we're gonna make this card here. Uh, you can see it has a lot of fun parts to it, uh, but it's not as crazy as you might think. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So to get started, why don't we grab some of our basic pieces. So uh, I'll have all the dimensions on my blog of everything you need, and I'll say it in this video. But we're going to start by um, doing our card base. I know it's not the most glamorous part, but with your card base, grab your bone folder. Now this card base is four and a quarter by 11 inches. I scored it at five and a half. And I'm doing this first just because I found this card was easier to build from the bottom up. Next, I'm gonna take a piece of old olive cardstock. This is five, or sorry, five and three eighths by four and one eighth. Now those one eighths I know can be a little bit tricky. Uh, thankfully with my stamp and trimmer, they have those measurements pretty easy to tell. Um, but that just gives us a really nice fine edge. Now I'm also doing this layer first and layering on top above it just because I found that it was a little bit easier to get the even edge uh, if I did it this way as opposed to gluing the white on first because I can see more clearly my border here. Okay, so I have that. I'm gonna set it aside for a minute and we're gonna move on to the layer that glues on top. So this piece is white, Whisper White again, same as your card base, only this is now four inches by five and a quarter. So this is the one that we're gonna do some die cutting with. So you need to grab your Big Shot or your favorite die cutting machine. And then I recommend using your magnetic platform to hold that die in shape, in place and then grab your two cutting mats, just your regular cutting mats. So we're gonna put our piece on here, and then in the die set, it's really cool because it has these really cute trees. Um, it's called the Card Front Builder because it has a lot of pieces to punch out holes in your card fronts as a base to make it really decorative so you can do the sort of layering we're doing today. So we're gonna grab this piece, and you're gonna set it on your white card base or your white piece of paper and you're aiming for just kind of an even edge along the sides and the bottom. Err a little bit on the side of being close to the skinny edge um, just because of how it lays out. But you're just going to put it on there and then we're going to run it forward and back. I like to do forward and back just to sort of help it get as much cut through as possible because of the detailing. Okay. So now when you peel this up, you'll see a lot of it comes away and sticks in the die. And that's okay. Um, in this particular case, it actually works fine to do it one more time uh, and then go through and poke it out. So don't worry about taking the time to poke it out now. So you're just doing the same thing. I flipped it around. So there's the die cut half. Now we're putting the die on this side. Again, trying to make an even edge. You can try to line up the little dots here. I find that it's not worth it in most of my cards. I figure I'm just going to cover it up. But sometimes you get lucky and those dots line up perfectly and it looks awesome all by itself. So we're doing this forward and back thing again. And then you can peel it up. And you can take your big shot and set it aside. Because you don't need it anymore for the card. 
So at this point is when I would go through and probably take the time to clean out inside my die um, and I would go through here. You can use the die brush, but I actually found using my fingernail um, or using a piercing tool worked really well to try to pop out all of these extra little pieces along the edges. Um, normally I would use my die brush on things like this, but I found I had the piercing tool here and I would just pop out things with my fingers or this. So, um, as you can see as I'm doing this, maybe, um, that those little dots that I was talking about, they didn't line up 100%. They were off by just a little. But you can see how this could be really cute by itself if those happen to line up. And in this case, honestly, they're so close that I probably wouldn't feel bad putting it on there. I wouldn't be embarrassed to send out a card that had that. So there is your cute little piece. You have your little scraps you can throw in the trash or set aside. But now we're gonna glue this down. So this, again, just use a few pieces of the tape runner and layer it onto your old olive. See, this hasn't been too bad so far, but isn't it just a stunning look? It looks so pretty and elegant, and it's not hard to do. You might have thought, oh, this is going to be really tricky. It wasn't, right? We just flipped it around, lined it up how we did before, didn't even pay that much attention. So now let's build the things that go on top of here. So the first part we're going to do is we're going to do our sentiment. So I grabbed from this, I grabbed the Deck the Halls. And I'm going to stamp it with archival black. Anytime I'm using red rubber, I prefer the archival black. It's honestly the best black that I have found that gives you a really deep, rich black. Um, you can watercolor with it, but it's not quite as permanent as stays on, so it's a little bit less intimidating to have in your craft room. Now we're going to stamp this on a two and three quarters by two and three quarters square piece of paper. Uh, if you have a stamp positioner, excellent if you don't no worries at all that's where I use my grid paper it helps me keep things a little bit straighter um, and I'm probably gonna lean into the frame a little bit just because that's how I am I'm gonna do it down here so I don't have to lean quite so far and you sort of line up this is gonna be about in the middle and stamp that's probably at an angle but yeah <laughs> or I get to talking and I don't pay good enough attention so you just flip it over and you try it again so let me do this one more time See, we can't all be perfect. Try as we might, and that's okay. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it art, right? It makes it your own. We're just gonna take this one, no matter what happens. Ah, good enough, excellent. Okay, so now that you have your sentiment, we're going to flip it over and we're gonna put on some ribbon. So because I don't want to have to pay attention to where exactly I'm going to put my ribbon, I just do two lines of adhesive. And then we're using this ribbon here is uh, the really pretty metallic metallic edge ribbon. It's a, This one is a vanilla satin with gold. They also come in kind of a white with a silver trim. It's very cute. Um, it's very soft too, so it's going to be great for tying on bows. In fact, when I was at Thailand, for the incentive trip, they gave us pillow gifts each night and wrapped around with the tag was using this ribbon. And honestly, it made me fall in love with it because every time I saw it, I was like, oh, it's so cute. So I'm just lining it up so it's hanging out kind of across the middle, kind of behind the the. And I'm not going to worry about trimming it yet because I just wanted that for now. So we have that there. And then we're going to take a one and a half by four inch piece of pattern paper. This is actually new paper. This is the uh, Merry Music Specialty Paper. It has actual sheet music for Christmas carols as well as patterns of just music notes, but it's a whole pack that's just music themed. Half the pack is black with white print, the other half is white with black print. Uh, and because it's a thinner paper, closer to the newsprint, you actually get 24 sheets in your specialty pack, so you still get a lot. Now, You'll notice that when I cut this to four inches, it's a little bit small, but I'm gonna use my punch to make the edges, which makes it even smaller. I did these dimensions because that was going to be most efficient for using my paper because four inches is an easy divider in 12. Um, but it means I have to be do a little trick here in a second. So if you don't wanna to have to hassle with this trick, just make your piece of paper longer. I would say make it like five inches um, and then trim it down if you need to. So I just 
do that. I cut it in half so that now I can make it as big or as little as I want while still being efficient with my paper. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit more tape runner here because I don't know exactly where I want this to go just from looking at it. So I'm going to set this here and use the actual card base as my guide because I don't want this hanging off the edge so that when I go put it in an envelope it gets all bent. So I'm just going to line them up approximately to the edges. I'm going to stick this in the middle. I'm just going to push right over where that paper is and now it comes up all nice and cute. So I used that, set it aside, and then I thought I was going to put this on here and I thought it needs something. And when I was thinking around my craft room I went, you know what, we have this acetate. This is in the annual catalog. Um, you'll notice there's actually a plastic uh, covering on one side to help protect it from fingerprints. But one side, the dots or the patterns are silver, the other is gold, uh, and it's really great for subtle accents and pretty um, backgrounds. So we're going to have this behind our deck the halls. This is sized to be three inches by three inches, so it's a little bit bigger. So now we're going to just come over here. I know, add more tape. We don't want it going anywhere, right? Add your tape, and then you're going to put it, line this up in the middle. Now I did it looking over, and again, this might be another one where it's easier to do it. Nope, I don't think that's actually any easier. So we're just going to eyeball it, and since it's clear, it's going to kind of blend in a little bit. So it's, if you're not perfect, it's not a big deal. So I've just done that. And then the last piece you need is to add, whoops, that's not my dimensionals. See, I keep them all in these little, uh, in the extra clear mount cases. Keeps things from sticking to each other. I use my rhinestones in one, my pearls in another, scraps of white in another, and then I have dimensionals in a third, or in a fourth. So I use that whole pack because they come in sets of four. So I'm just putting some dimensionals on the back of here. And trying to get those backings off. There we go. And then all you have to do is put this in the middle. Now I made it so these ribbons will cover up my dots. So if I didn't like the way my dots were, they will cover it up perfectly. If you do like your dots, then you could, you know, you could turn it sideways, have it in here and have the dots surround it. But I'm doing it this way today. So I'm just going to line that up, set it down, and then you can take, you have ribbon scissors, Take ribbon scissors and come in here and just go snip, snip, and you have a fun, cute card. So that's how I made this card. Like I said, there's a lot of little steps, but it goes together really easy and becomes a stunning card for you to share with your family and friends. Oh, I almost forgot the last part. I had finished this card, I thought it was super cute, and then I realized it needed something, and I had been going, what does it need? So I actually went back to my stamp set and went to this little holly berry and decided it might be the perfect way to add just a little bit of color. So all I did was mounted it on a clear block, and then I grabbed my old olive and real red markers. Now I love using my markers on rubber this way. So I started with the old olive and I just colored on the leaves. Now if you're using marker and you haven't done it very much before, make sure when you're coloring on your rubber stamps that you color sideways on the, so it's almost flat to it uh, so that you can preserve your tips so they don't get smashed up and destroyed. And then you'll take your real red, you'll color in the berries, and then find a piece of white scrap paper Let's see, is that, that'll be good enough. Go, no, that might be a little small. We'll do this one. Go to huff on it, stamp, and then you have a cute berry. Then all you have to do is grab your scissors, and yes, you have to fussy cut, I'm sorry, but it doesn't actually take that long. I'm gonna do it right now so you can see. You don't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be precise. I always recommend when you're fussy cutting, turn the paper, don't turn your scissors, it gives you a cleaner edge, as well as when you're cutting, make sure you leave a white border. If you try to cut right along the edge, you invariably cut into your image by just a little bit, 
which makes it much more obvious that your cutting might not have been as perfect as you'd like it to be. But if you cut with a white edge, typically it all blends together and you don't notice. So I've cut that out. See, that didn't take that long. And you don't notice all the little imperfections that I might have. And then, so you could use a, a regular dimensional, you could cut it up. I went and grabbed these mini dimensionals. I love them, they are super adorable. So by comparison, here is full size dimensional and there is your little mini dimensional. So I grabbed a mini dimensional. It just barely fit on here. And you're gonna peel off the backing just like you would a regular dimensional. And then you'll just stick it here on your card in the corner. So now it really is finished uh, and you have that cute little look. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you liked this peek at the Carols of Christmas stamp set and dies. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment or if you just wanna let me know what you thought, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you want any of these items, just let me know and I will help get them ordered for you. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much and happy stamping.